here we go. So I'm going to talk about drought in the rainforest, understanding ecosystem change in northeastern Puerto Rico. My name is Wendy Silver, and I'm presenting on behalf of the Lucio LTER team. And I am uh, talking about drought today um, because because we've we've experienced we're experiencing drought um, in a couple of ways in in Lucio. Um, First, uh, the models are projecting that we're going to be seeing a, a decline in mean annual rainfall over time. Um, this is a heat map. Can you see my mouse? Yes. Okay. So this is a heat map of current rainfall in millimeters per day. And here's the Lucio Experimental Forest where LTER is. And here is the projected change in annual rainfall, taking the 21st century and subtracting the 20th century. And what we're expecting to see here over time is a, a 20 to 30 percent change in mean annual rainfall. Here's the Lucio experimental forest over here, which is a, a really significant drop. So models are projecting um, a drying of the Caribbean region in Puerto Rico in the future. And then, oh here, let's try this. there we go. And then we um, also experienced uh, what we thought at the time as a rare event, which was a strong drought in 2015 that impacted most ecosystem processes in the human tropical forests that we studied. Um, to, to show you what this looked like, on the left over here, we have stream oxygen concentrations. This is the average daily oxygen concentration in milli, milligrams per liter in streams. And you can see that oxygen concentrations declined really dramatically during the 2015 drought. Um, this was because flow was lower. And we saw a big increase in organic matter that, that fueled oxygen consumption. So this is a big litter fall event that happened during the drought that fed the stream invertebrates that consumed the oxygen. In the soils, we see the opposite effect. As soils dried, we saw big oxygenation events uh, that occurred across the landscape and persisted for a very long time. And that affected a suite of biogeochemical processes um, most uh, particularly here, it affected the form of phosphorus that we saw uh, cycling in soils. Phosphorus is the element that's most commonly thought of as limiting to net primary productivity in tropical forests, so it's highly relevant. And what we saw was during the drought that the, the extractability of inorganic phosphorus declined dramatically across the landscape, and uh, we saw an increase in organic phosphorus, probably because of those litter fall events um, across the landscape. Right. Um, we've been studying drought um, at small scales um, through controlled experiments. These are shelters. This was a study conducted by Tana Wood. This was a study conducted by um, Omar Gutierrez de Arroyo for his PhD thesis. Um, and what's interesting about these experiments is that they dry the soil but are not necessarily affecting the plants very much. We don't have any live plants underneath these shelters. And so what we're really measuring is the effect on soil physical properties and microbial biomass. And what we saw when we dry at a small scale is a decline in soil respiration of CO2. But during the big drought, where we see an effect on trees, we actually saw an increase in soil respiration in both the slopes and in the valley environments. These were big, significant changes. Uh, when we model this out into the future, uh, we see a, a suggestion that net ecosystem production and thus overall carbon cycling is going to slow down over time, especially when coupled with the warming that's project projected. So going forward, uh, we want to study drought in the, in the forest through larger scale uh, controlled experiments, but of course we can't do that um, in the um, absence of, of other background disturbance events that happen in these environments. Um, and that would be hurricanes uh, being one of the most important in Puerto Rico. So we hope to study drought, hurricanes, and then the combination of drought and hurricanes, which is what our likely reality is. Uh, when I first started working in Lucio, we uh, thought that the hurricane return interval was about every 60 years. Uh, what we're seeing um, now is that the return interval is about once every decade, so a, a much more frequent um, hurricane interval. Um, and we're curious to see how uh, hurricanes and droughts impact uh, the biota and biogeochemical cycling. And so to study that, uh, what we're doing is uh, designing and implementing 
uh, two types of experiments. In the stream, we have the stream flow reduction experiment, or stream free, uh, which we'll be starting in a couple of years. And what that's going to be doing is diverting um, water from uh, one branch of the Prieta stream. Oops. Uh oh. Go back. There we go. One branch of the Prieta stream so that we can dry out this uh, section of the stream and then we'll use a different branch for the um, for the reference. And then what we hope to implement in the um, forest and the upland environments is our shelters, uh, large shelters um, that are underneath the canopy but over the forest floor where we can dry out roots in addition to uh, drying out the, the soil. Um, and we hope to do both of these experiments first in the intact forest and then use our canopy trimming experiment um, afterwards to try to understand what the impact of uh, combined drought and hurricanes are on the biota and biogeochemical cycling. And that's what I have. Thank you.